As any student can tell you, college admissions are a competitive process. Most schools have minimum test scores and class standings to filter out the best of the best, but that's only the beginning. Extracurriculars, volunteer work, job experience, or even the specific classes a prospective student takes can make or break an application. In 2013, the average acceptance rate for four-year colleges was 64.7%, but many of the top schools are far more selective. Factors that determine a student's acceptance go beyond their application. Family history, location, and income all affect the likelihood that a particular student will be able to enroll and succeed in college. These factors are predetermined by heritage before a student even thinks of writing their first college app. So how and why does this happen, and how does it affect students' enrollment? The answer can be found by looking at nature's own selective process. Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection is the process behind the great diversity of life that has developed on Earth. Evolution requires three conditions in order to work. First, there must be variation within populations. Second, these variations must be able to be passed from parent to offspring. And third, competition ensures that limited resources lead to different rates of survival and reproduction among a population. So, natural selection is the tendency of variations that help organisms succeed in competition to be passed to the next generation. The variations necessary for evolution are produced by an organism's genetic code. Genes are the blueprints for the construction of an organism. Mistakes in genes can produce new features that may help an organism survive. Those genes are passed on to offspring. Essentially, natural selection is really acting on an organism's genes. We can also apply the principles of biological evolution to culture. Instead of genes, information is exchanged through memes, small units of cultural ideas or behavior. Memes are varied. They can be transferred between people, and a person can only remember or act on a limited number of memes, so they compete for space within our consciousness. This relates specifically to the college acceptance process. The memes, in this case, are traits such as a student's socioeconomic status, or SES, and the high school they attended. The selective pressures are the requirements by college admissions boards, which force students into competition with each other. Being accepted into a college is analogous to survival. The three requirements for Darwinian evolution are all present. There is variation in the memes, lower or higher SES. These memes are often inherited by offspring. Rich children benefit from those parents' wealth and there is competition. Not everyone who applies to college will get in. A student's socioeconomic status is a meme which has great power in determining their fitness. SES varies throughout the population and affects many things throughout one's education. One of the greatest indicators of future college success is whether a student has taken any advanced placement courses in high school. As this graph shows, schools in higher poverty areas tend to offer fewer AP courses limiting the number of students who can take them. The eventual effects of this can be seen here. Although students in all income brackets have seen gradual growth when it comes to obtaining a degree, the divide has been growing rapidly between income brackets. A student's SES is even a greater indicator of future success than test scores. Here we can see that even the highest scoring students from the lowest SES quartile are less likely to graduate from college than the lowest scoring students from the top SES quartile. The academic performance of low SES students can be increased by attracting high quality teachers to low performing schools. A federally funded initiative paid top teachers $20,000 extra over two years to teach in high poverty, low performing schools in cities like Miami, Los Angeles, and Houston. Almost all teaching vacancies were filled by top teachers, most of whom re remained even after the bonuses expired. Reading and math scores in the affected schools improved significantly. By improving the quality of teachers, the fitness of the students increased and they became more competitive against higher SES students. If similar programs were implemented in low-performing schools across the country, low SES students will have a higher chance of being accepted into universities. Yo, what up? Put this in the video over the credits, okay? <laughs>